Hello students, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this video, we will talk about coefficient approximation. This is a very interesting thing that we can do with some knowledge about a particular polynomial. So, I'll, I'll talk about the problem because this is the best way to learn. You start with the problem and then you backtrack into the problem solving strategy or concept. The problem says that we have this polynomial, this cubic equation, and with one piece of extra information, all roots are positive numbers. What are roots? Roots are those values of x which makes this zero. If you plug in in place of x those values, then the equation will turn to zero. Those numbers are called roots of the polynomial. And a cubic polynomial has three roots. This is the fundamental theorem of algebra. n degree polynomial has at most n distinct roots. And if you also take into consideration the repeated roots, then there are exactly n roots, real or complex. In this particular case, it is given that all of the roots are positive real numbers. With this information, we need to approximate or figure out the value of alpha, which is one of the coefficients of this polynomial. Alpha is the coefficient of x to the power 0. So, the question really is this. What can you say about alpha? This is x cubed plus minus 9x squared plus 26x minus alpha. What can you say about alpha? And it is a very interesting application of the arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality. I've talked about this multiple times in this YouTube channel as well as in the Math Olympiad programs and the ISI CMI entrance programs at Chinta Academy, that whenever you see positive real numbers, this particular phrase, it's a hint. Maybe, and maybe, you can use the arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality. And we, you'll see how we apply that here, okay? So, suppose the three roots are t1, t2, t3. All of them are positive real numbers. They could be repeated. That means t1 might be equal to t2. We don't know about that. So, if that is true, then we can factorize this equation or expression as x minus t1 times x minus t2 times x minus t3. Because obviously, if I plug in x equals to t1, this will become 0. If I plug in x equals to t2, this will become 0. If I plug in x equals to t3, this becomes 0. And that is the meaning of the word root. Right? Okay. So, now if you open it up, if you sort of multiply everything out, you will get x cube minus t1 plus t2 plus t3 x squared plus t1, t2, uh, t2, t3, plus t3, 3, t1, x, minus t1, t2, 3, 3. This is what you'll get if you just simply multiply everything out. Why do I know this very quickly? Because this is how the Vietas formulas are derived. Now, I'm not referring to Vieta's formulas here. Uh, it's a very important part of this entire theory. But just by multiplying it out, you can rediscover the Vieta's formulas. So, let's compare this with the actual equation x cubed minus 9x squared plus 26x minus alpha. x cubed minus 9x squared plus 26x minus alpha. These two equations are same. So, 
what we know is T1 plus T2 plus T3 is equals to 9. Just comparing the coefficients, it's 9. And we also know T1, T2, T2, T3, T3, T1 is 26. Right? With this knowledge, we want to approximate alpha. But alpha is simply T1, T2, T3. T1, T2, T3 is equal to alpha. And we want to know how big can alpha be? Can you range the values of alpha? Can you say how big or how small can alpha be? Those, those sort of things. Okay. So there are four options in objective type problem. Uh, but uh, just notice one thing. What we did here is we rewrote the Vietas formula. The sum of roots, the product of roots taken two at a time and the product of roots. But we sort of derived it from that factorization. Okay, So it's kind of fun. Uh, I, I, I like to sort of re-derive some of the very well-known formulas from time to time because I tend to forget a lot of formulas. That's number one. Second thing is, whenever I re-derive it, I sort of teach myself a little bit more of it, which is also very useful. Okay, All right. So now we are almost done. We want to talk about alpha. We know these two things. How do we do that? Well, we will be using the AMGN inequality. The AMGN inequality says the arithmetic mean of these three numbers is always greater than or equal to the geometric mean of the three numbers. And this is true because the numbers are positive numbers. Remember, that is the condition that was given. All the roots are given to be positive real numbers. That's why we can use the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality. Okay, so we are almost done. So this is now 9 over 3 greater than or equal to T1, T2, T3 to the power 1 third. So 3 to the power 3 is greater than or equal to T1, T2, T3. Or the product of, or this is alpha, right? So alpha is less than or equal to 27. Okay, so that is actually one of the options of this question. So we are almost done. But I want to give you two additional questions. What can you derive from this second equation? Can you give a better bound for alpha? That's the first question. The second question is, what can you say about the smallest value of alpha? How small can alpha be? So these are the two challenge questions. I want you to think about it and put it in the comment section. The best commenter will be invited in the channel and then we can hear from him or her what is the what are the ideas. Okay. All right. Keep on doing beautiful mathematics. I'll see you in the next one.